Hi, this is Dr. Crane. We're going to talk about how to do a rock description in Google Earth so that you can can use your rock description to virtually describe the outcrop that you're going to be visiting on future field trips. Uh, this is in Moab. If you haven't watched the geologic sketching video, I, I suggest you do that first because it's going to give you an opportunity to pay attention to the different parts of this particular outcrop and in particular how to look at uh, this unit right here which is what we're going to be describing now which is the Wingate sandstone. Okay so when you're in Google Earth you've probably noticed that there are a bunch of little uh, pen points and that each pen point is um, a, they're all white that have to be with the um, with the units. They start with the abbreviation for the unit, then they have the formal unit name. So for example, the one that we're going to practice with is the, da, 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 here it is, the JW Wingate Sandstone. Now as you're looking at each of these, you can click on this and read the USGS description that I've included here, but that may or may not help you. Um, when you're in the field, if you were actually here, you know, things like being uh, very fine to fine grain quartzos or sub to subarcosic sandstone, like, yeah, that could definitely help you. But that's not going to help you in Google Earth. And to be honest, when I'm in the field, I want to be able to recognize things at a distance. Like, if I'm standing on, if we're here in the field, and I'm standing on this side of the road, uh, I don't want to have to go all the way, I don't want to have to go all the way over there uh, to get a hand sample of this to figure out what that unit is. Um, and also, I'm not sure why that's kind of grayed out. Maybe, maybe there's something spray painted on there and Google Earth just doesn't want you to see it. Anyway, um, beside the point it's a really good thing to be able to look at a rock from a distance, a rock unit, and know those bigger, broader characteristics um, so that you can estimate, like get, not really estimate, but give a really good educated guess about what that rock unit is from a distance. Um, I have to do this a lot, and when I'm in the field, and it's not just because um, I don't want to go <laughs> across that river, um, it could be because it's not safe to get over there. It could also be that you don't have time. Like usually when you're in the field, you know, like I'm a mom, I can go in for two weeks. So I've got to be able to make those decisions quick from a distance. And I also need to be able to plan strategically. So like if you and I are in the field together and we only have two weeks, if if there's one unit that we have to map and it's very easily identifiable from a distance, like, let's just take advantage of that. Let's play those cards because there's no reason not to. And you can always go ground truth if you have extra time. Um, but limited budget, limited time, you, you need to save yourself here, especially when you've got a unit like this, uh, which is what we're going to be looking at. So when we sketch this, we saw that it formed this really prominent cliff or ledge and that it had a staining pattern on it. So let's let's turn around on this side and let's get a better description, a, a useful description for the field. This is going to be part of your strat column and what you're going to turn in. So if you're looking at this rock unit right here, pause the video and make a list of the things that stand out. And I'm going to do the same. Okay, so the cliff stands out to me first. I mean, this is this is just straight up. 
but it's also that the surface of it is smooth and kind of shiny. So we've got a wavy, smooth cliff with a polished, shiny erosion surface, and it's streaked. So the weathering pattern isn't just that it's dark, it's that it's dark weathering vertical patterns. It's almost like somebody poured buckets of black paint and brown paint going down the sides. Where the surface is a little bit fresher, it looks orange to pink, but that pattern, that weathering pattern, um, the dark varnish, it's actually called a varnish, it's really quickly developing that streak pattern. So even if you don't have the dark pattern, you're still going to have some kind of vertical pattern on the, on the outcrop. Okay. You can also talk about the, the fact that you can see some um, horizontal bedding planes within the unit but mostly it's it's massively bedded and it looks like really chunky blocky fractures um, and it's prone to forming these arrest lines these little arced fractures also but they're they're surficial they're not deep there's no deep fractures that I see in this outcrop and then I can pay attention to the base of the unit so how does it transition into the unit below it well it looks like um, the base is a pretty smooth trend or sorry a pretty uh, rapid transition between the cliff former and a slope former so uh, once you start to get this almost like redder more fracture bedding that um, is thinner and it looks more friable uh, once we start transitioning into seeing that and seeing some smaller ledge formers with broader um, slope formers, then we know we've transitioned into the unit below it. So those to me would be the useful ways to describe the Wingate Sandstone. And if we went down this road and we kept going until we got to the Cayenta, which is the next unit up, then we can start to describe the top of this unit. Oh, we might actually be able to describe a fresh surface too in here. Unless this is the transition to the Cayenta. Yeah, I think we're I think we're almost transitioning into the unit above it. Let's see. I'm gonna access straight view for a minute. We have access to the geologic map, might as well use it. Yeah, that's that transition point into the JK formation. But I I marked down here as a better place to get a description, but hopefully you all saw that right here something happened. Like, let's go back to that spot. Right here, we all of a sudden had a different bedding pattern. See how this erosion, this pattern of erosion is different than what we saw up there? This pattern of fracturing is different. I, and if we look at this cliff, that looks really different than what we saw around the corner. So this is the... This is the top of the wind gate, the base of the Cayenta. If we go up here, I think we'll probably continue to see even more different looking rocks. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. That is totally different than what we saw up there. Let's go right here to this middle area. Yeah. That's the contact. Right there. That's too cool. Look how different this is how different it's weathered. It looks, these look almost like um, maybe cross bedding in here. It's fracturing along that. Yeah, I mean, this has that varnish pattern, but it's still, it's, it's so different. All right, so that's how we we're looking at this and we're saying, okay, it's so unique. We are in a different unit. This is the Cayenta formation. So what you're going to do for your strat column is you're going to go through and you're going to visit each of those outcrop locations and you're going to write those descriptions for each one. Alright, hope that helps you. Yeah.